But before our detour, it's time to look at another m option on the menu screen that's just been unlocked. As you saw there, we've got the noise report. And the noise report is a very, very useful tool. It'll show you the stats uh, and data on any noise that you've encountered. It'll also show the lowest level you've beaten them at, you know, for bragging rights purposes. But the main thing you want to look at here is that thing that lists those difficulty levels and says pin drops. That is the pretty much the sole reason you're using this. It'll show you the exact percentages of item drops for each enemy. And see, look, you can even look up bosses here, as you'll see, I've got uh, Vespertilio Knorr here. And I didn't get any drops off this one. So they'll still show up as question marks until you've actually got them. But it'll show you the exact percentages. Now, there are several ways you can adjust your drop percentage, and I'll go into full details on that a bit later. But it is often best to look at that page because, yeah, drop rates are a very, very big part of this game. There's hundreds of pins in total, and... Well, most of them you get off random enemy drops. But, enough of that. Right, let's, uh, enter the shop for a uh, cutscene. Uh, yeah, I mean, shops in RPGs never have sales anyway, um... Oh, except for, uh, Goldrod Department Store. That's probably the only exception I can think of off the top of my head, but other than that... Sorry for that weird, um... Tangent there. Okay... <laughs> No, not noise, just screaming fangirls. <laughs> By the way, those two, they're not just any random generic NPCs. Later on we'll realise they're actually fairly significant NPCs. <laughs> yeah, that blog... The title of it makes it sound like some kind of emo rant, but... Okay... Alright... Anyway... It also took me, uh, ages to realise that... That guy, Eiji Orji... Uh, that Orji actually means prince in Japanese. <laughs> I can't believe it took me so long to figure that out. Especially considering that I've spent... Okay, that's a weird image. Um, anyway, since I've spent ages playing Shadow Dragon and Mystery of the Emblem in Japanese, which of course they use the term Prince of awful lot that. Spicy tuna rolls apparently aren't Japanese in origin, by the way. Which kind of makes that, um, statement make a little bit more sense, but... That's exactly what I'd say in this situation, actually. But, Shiki's not going to let you. And there's a good reason, because... This is an introduction to a certain game mechanic. And, oh, that line, I almost forgot about that line. Now, for some reason, I found that line hilarious because, of course, the characters in this game were designed by uh, the same one who did all the Kingdom Hearts designs, and a lot of people say he kind of has a thing about zippers. Yes, Kingdom Hearts 2, Donald has zippers on his hat, for some reason. And it's best not to even mention Pete. Just, ugh. But anyway, I find that line about, uh, about zippers, um, is that an intentional in-joke or not? I don't know. But I kind of treat it as that. Anyway, now it's time to finally realise exactly what she's getting at here. 
Yes, trends are a part of gameplay, believe it or not. And Shiki tries to explain it the best she can in non-fourth wall breaking terms. But it's a good thing we have this pop-up message that comes up later to really fully explain it. And here it comes. You can't really um, say this without breaking the fourth wall, but yes, all of the brands in Shibuya uh, yeah, get ranked in each area. And now... Um, both clothing and pins are branded. Which means that if you use a pin that's at the top of the brand chart in an area, its attack gets... In fact, its attack gets doubled, <laughs> I think. So, yeah. Influencing trends can be quite helpful. Now, for all, what I know, the brands on your clothing doesn't actually affect your stats or anything. But it does, however, help affect the trends in the area. So if you keep wearing clothing of a certain brand in one area, that brand's going to increase in popularity. So it's good if the clothes you're wearing syncs with the brands of pins you like using. And the rest of this is more backstory, but it's quite important backstory. Wow, she made all those clothes. Eri, of course, being the friend from before. Hmm, how exactly is she the amazing one? One day... what? Right, let's uh, go with the stuffed animal topic for now, because this is quite interesting here. Yeah, and you might have noticed this stuffed animal there before, but... That is actually her method of attacking. <laughs> and it's not so much a weapon as almost a kind of partner. Mr. Mew. And of course it becomes a running gag that Neku thinks it's a pig. Neku's next line said exactly what I was thinking at this point. <laughs> the lead pipe would be quite interesting. Now, possibly you need to have some kind of bond with that object in order for it to work. I don't know. But wait, wait a minute. It sort of does its own thing. Like I said before, it's not so much a weapon as almost a semi-sentient partner. And that's actually pretty terrifying if you think about it. Just the thought of that thing acting on its own. Ugh. And yeah, and if you remember from before, if you look 
closely at Shiki's animations in battle, you'll realise it's Mr. Mew doing the attacking, not her. Mr. Mew also has some other interesting abilities, which you'll see in Shiki's upgraded fusions. And now comes Shiki's backstory and her main motivations. They also give stamp boosts, but that's probably not what she had in mind. Now, probably a random thing I should mention here, the other thing about Mr. Mew is, uh, in the Japanese manual, it mentions that Shiki actually uses a specific pin to use psychokinesis on him. Uh, apparently it's called Groove Pawn, but you can't actually get that pin in the game. On that note, Beat actually has a unique pin as well. Well, supposedly, but I don't think the name of that one's been revealed. Uh, but I still have a way to go. That line, that's your typical response in Japanese if you've been praised on something. If someone says you're really good at something. It's kind of like a cultural thing, you're sort of forced to be modest about it. It's just uh, the way they sort of treat things in a way. But yeah, she's got aspirations to be a fashion designer, and she seems really good at it. Neku, on the other hand, doesn't really know what he's doing at this point. Yes, we've already seen this tutorial. Anyway, now it's time to finally do some shopping. Yeah, those quest items are kind of like, um... You know, some other RPGs where you need to trade in certain items for a better item. Or, like, collect materials for an item or something like that. It's kind of a cross between a sort of a synthesis thing and an item trading quest thing. Right, now there's quite a few stores Not here. Again. But this first one, and probably the main one at 10-4, because you don't find these shops elsewhere. Now, I'm not sure if this brand is pronounced D and B, D plus B, or simply DB. Well, later you on you find out it's an anagram, but I don't want to spoil exactly what it's an anagram for. But anyway, I'll just call it DB for the time being. It focuses mostly on what they call sort of club style clothing, and it appears to be Shiki's favourite brand, so a lot of the clothing here has abilities to benefit uh -huh. her. As you'll see here, this one probably does. Yeah, defence boost for Shiki. Yeah, sometimes you'll get partner specific uh -huh. abilities out of clothing. I think this star cam does too. That looks like something that would be quite useful to buy. And you might notice that I already traded in uh, some of my Scarletite for a fusion boost. Yeah, you can buy the fusion boost stickers for specific partners at... Look for stores that feature their favourite brand. You need Scarletite to get them though, which is that thing you receive at the end of a lot of missions. It's useless other than trading in for rarer things. Right, now this thing requires uh -huh. one Richelsea, which uh, is a material you might recognise uh, from the Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts series. In this game it's a pin, but it's pretty much the same thing, you trade it uh -huh. in for more powerful pins and stuff. And yeah, sometimes shop clerks give you abilities on clothing right from the beginning. But at the moment, we can't really get much from here. Uh, and here's another Musratus. I explained about Musratus a bit earlier, but even though we found a store earlier, in fact, Musratus basically has outlets all over the place, but it doesn't mean you should just shop at one specific Musratus store, because different shopkeepers will unlock different abilities. In fact, sometimes it takes a while to figure out which shopkeeper unlocks which ability. So you might have noticed, I mean, I mean, in fact, that 3 for 1 salt pack you'll see there, 
It took me ages to find out which shopkeeper actually gives you the real amount. And this one is sort of an unbranded shop in a way, it just sells various random things. Now this sticker here looks really useful, and it probably is, except for the fact that I want to save my Skeletite up for more fusion boosts. Yes, fusion boosts unlock another fusion attack. And often they're really devastating, and mainly because Thanks I just want to show off the cool animations, so I'm going to focus on pretty much buying those. Later in the game, you'll also find extra pin slot stickers. You should prioritise those above Thanks all so else. So generally, I prefer to buy fusion stickers and extra pin slots. Anyway, that's about all I've got time for Thanks in this so part. So, in the next one, we'll hopefully start today's mission, if you can really call it that.